Welcome everybody to today's webinar. J.D. Fox, Director of Partnerships at Presto Sports. And when we've been talking to our clients during this uncertain period of time, one of the key items that has come up is content creation and what can you do with your previous content and when sports get back going again, what are some new and creative ways we can do to get content out on social media and through other avenues. So one of the uh, key partners we have in the space is a company called Really, And uh, today we're gonna talk about their product and how you can use it to go back in your uh, history from this past year and create some new content. And they'll also show you how their system works in terms of uh, creating content when sports resume. So for the introduction on Really, uh, I'd like to turn it over to their co-founder and chief marketing officer, Ian Stevens. Ian. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, JD, thank you guys much. And thanks for everybody to help uh, who came on uh, and, and help us put the webinar together. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to pull this off, so thank you. Um, I've got Tim, uh, who's the VP of Business Development from Really. It's gonna start our demo shortly, but just real quick, I wanted to tell everybody you know, kind of how this company came to be. So initially it was a group of, uh, of fantasy footballers who wanted to basically smack talk each other by immediately sharing clips of their given player scoring a touchdown or uh, scoring points and uh, being able to deliver those clips uh, within our fantasy football group to each other. Um, this just wasn't something that was on the menu or was offered by uh, the, the, the fantasy football companies we were using. So we started to talk about how we could use computer vision and AI to automatically detect clips. Um, at that point, it was just trying to figure out um, how we could detect a touchdown. There's a lot of things that goes on on the, on, on the screen when a touchdown happens. So you've got uh, lines on the field, you've got a, a player crossing a boundary, uh, you've got a noise eruption at the end when the crowd goes wild. We basically have built a system that takes, uh, that leverages computer vision. So it's, it's looking uh, at field markings, it's listening to crowd noise, it's taking and analyzing all these different pieces of data and it's churning out uh, a highlight or a clip. Um, we, we started uh, in the uh, sport of lacrosse where we started working with Major League Lacrosse. Uh, since that time, we have uh, now have over 100 collegiate partners. Uh, we have professional and semi-professional relationships. Um, we also have folks in esports that are using the platform. Um, but ultimately what we tried to build was something that could automate uh, clip creation and then make it super simple to share those clips uh, to uh, an audience on social media with one click of a button. Um, so that's how the company got started. That's where we are now uh, with our great partners here uh, at Presto. We started to see that we shared a lot of overlapping customers. And so we felt like uh, this was a great time for us to uh, do a little bit, uh, dig a little bit deeper into our team up and uh, create a webinar that hopefully will bring you guys uh, some value. Um, it, it'll, it'll give you a tool that you can lever into your digital media strategy um, and make your life a little simpler uh, and, and more automated and more streamlined and more efficient. So with that, I'm gonna hand uh, things off to Tim here and we're gonna show you, um, you know, how the platform operates in live streaming content. Uh, we're gonna show you uh, how it also works on maybe a back catalog of video you might be sitting on. And if you don't mind, please uh, just post your questions in the QA uh, section here. Um, and we will do all, uh, we we're gonna kind of retain the back half of our demo, demo today just for Q&A. Um, we're just gonna walk you through each piece of the platform, then we'll stop at the end and we'll go through all the questions we've received and, and spend some time taking you know, new questions as well. So with that, I'll give it over to Tim, thank you. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, JD. I uh, appreciate the opportunity today to, uh, to show the platform off to everybody who's joined, and thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, just log into the platform here real quick, and as Ian said, we're going to walk through the platform. We're going to show you a couple different ways that we are collecting uh, clips in, the, uh, in real time, uh, in post-production, providing you some ways to create highlight reels, condensed games, um, and also how you can take uh, content, uh, create content from uh, your old library of games and quickly uh, have clips available for you uh, in the meantime, in the, in the time now to uh, provide that content out to the people that you uh, want to reach on social channels. Um, so 
to start off, this is our, our platform here. This is a live game we have running in our background. Um, it happened already this season, but uh, it's uh, from Vanguard University, a, a Presto customer and also a Really customer. Um, so we are, it's actually live clipping this game. All these clips have come in in, the, in real time. You'll see it's, it's right up to date with what's going on with the score being 16 to 20. We have 16 to 20 on that last free throw here. Um, so we'll come back to this in a moment, but how do you get your games onto the platform is the big question we get a lot. You're able to do that in a couple different ways. Um, you're able to add a single game here and schedule it, or you can do a bulk upload with a CSV file to schedule your whole month, your whole uh, uh, sports season, or your whole year of uh, events. Um, just a couple information pieces of data that we're looking for here is the date and the time of the game. And then the big one here is your M3 U8 stream URL. Um, your customer, um, the, your representative at Presto and Stretch will be able to provide that link to you. So that is your stream URL um, that, you'll, that you can use uh, to ingest your feed onto our platform without taking in any more bandwidth than you are, you are using um, at your location, whether it be on the field or in an arena or in the gym. So we're not gonna be taking any extra bandwidth from you. We are uh, gonna be using, utilizing the stretch server, or Presto servers and, uh, and going from there. Um, next is your sport. So you're gonna select the sport that you uh, are gonna run through the platform. As you'll see here, we have a, a full catalog of sports that our analyzer is trained on. So we have baseball, basketball, field hockey, football, ice hockey, lacrosse, rugby, uh, soccer, softball, and then volleyball and wrestling are our beta sports. Um, we also support a couple of diff uh, many different eSport titles, um, but today we will focus on the traditional sports. So once you have a sport selected, you're going to be able to select your team. So you can type in whatever you'd like for your team, whether it be a short name, whether it be the full school name, that is up to you. It's just text so you don't have to worry about that and then you'll notice we have a six and a four here six and the four is the offsets and the length of your clip so we're going to basketball uh, specifically here we're going to create you a 10 second clip of each highlight that is uh taken out of your game so with that we're taking six seconds before the event happens and then four seconds afterwards to build that clip for you um, you have the ability to edit that clip. It's not a set in stone 10 seconds and you can't do anything with it. So if you wanted to extend it or shorten it, you have that ability uh, in the editing process of each individual clip that's produced. Um, once you are all set here, you hit save and you're gonna build out your calendar on this page here. As you see, we have your date, time, uh, your URL will live here. Um, you have your sport type, your teams, and your status. If you ever need to edit something, you can come in, hit edit, edit your start time, whether if the game is delayed or if, the, uh, or if your URL changes, you're able to come in and change that URL and you're ready to go. Um, so with that, what do you do when your event's live? So you're gonna come over to the stream tab here. Let me mute this. Uh, you have all of your information you put into your, uh, your, your schedule here. You're able to hide that, bring everything up, and you'll see up here you have a couple buttons. So to ensure that things are working properly, you have an orange stop detection button, and on the bottom right here you have a detection progress bar. So that's going to indicate to you that everything is working properly and that our detection server is picking up your game as we ingest it on the platform it's playing, and your uh, and our servers are reading, the analyzers are reading what's going on, and we're looking for highlights to start clipping. Um, you'll see right here, we have a highlight creation progress bar below. Um, as your clips are being created, these, um, this will fill up with a green color, and it will produce the clip on the right-hand side here. Um, as the event occurs in the live stream, it takes about nine, a minute and a half to three minutes for that clip in real time to produce to be produced and show up on this table on the right hand side here. So you're going to get those clips pretty quickly um, as it occurs during the game. Um, a couple things that we are looking at here is we have AI running to see what's going on in the game. We have computer vision to read the score bug on the screen for the game. And then we have our audio detection listening in to try and uh, 
pick up um, the excitement of the announcers to the excitement of the crowd, the whistles of the referees to determine the exciting plays to, uh, to put a value on that. And you'll see that on the table on the right hand side here. Um, one thing you do have the ability to do if you, if you saw a play that you wanted to access to or weren't sure if it's going to get clipped, you're able to hit this clip it button and it's going to generate a manual clip, um, uh, an auto generated manual clip for you. So it's processing now, it will show up here and then you'll get a manual clip on the right. So this feature, the, the platform does come with a manual clipping feature and you'll see it right here. It creates a, a 10 second clip for you that you can then edit and get what you want out of it for that context. So if it's a post game interview, you can do that and then edit the timestamp so that you have that interview uh, loaded up for your highlight reels um, afterwards. Um, so it is, so what we're doing here is what you, the information that you get are the start and end times. So these are your timestamps within the stream. Uh, they are editable and I will walk through that in a moment. So you are able to edit each clip. Um, we're, as I said, we are reusing computer vision. So we are reading the score bug and providing that data for you here. So you can tell the story of the game and know what play occurred when that, uh, when that happened to your, um, on the, in the scoring here, um, at the stage of the game. Um, we have our hype score. So this is when we're, we're putting together our audio, our AI, our computer vision together, and we're ranking each play for you so that you can go back and find the most exciting plays based on the hype score. Um, we are able to, uh, we're able to rank each play for you so that you have that ability so that you can, um, so that you can find those exciting plays instead of having to sift through every single play as at a basketball game, you'll get around 80 to 120 plays out of that game as all the baskets are cut. Um, but you will, you'll see that, uh, in the archive section in a moment, the total amount. Um, next is your type. So for each sport or AI is trained on kind of the type of events that occur during the game so that we can label it for you so it's easier to find. You have the ability to, um, so you'll come through, you'll see this is a two point play. So it cuts cut as a two point uh, field goal. Uh, three point field goal, as you can see the score change from a two, uh, zero to a three and so on and so forth. And then you have free throws. Um, and then you'll see hype events a lot. A hype event is when it's a non-scoring event, but so the AI picked up something that happened and the audio also got elevated. So it's an exciting play, but the computer vision says a score didn't happen. So it's going to come through as a hype event. So in, in basketball, it's usually your, um, your defensive plays, your ability to, uh, to get those, uh, plays involved here. Um, so let me go and show you a clip here. So we have a three point basket here um, and kind of what you can do, the actions you can take with each individual clip is you can play it. And in our stream section, our live, a second video player actually populates so that you have the ability here to um, have your live game still going on and you have the ability to edit this clip uh, as you go too. So, as we see, we got the inbound pass. If we didn't want that, we have the ability to now cut this back um, a second or two. So if you go to 32 seconds, change your timestamp, click off of it. And in about uh, five to 10 seconds, the clip's gonna get picked up by the server again. And it's gonna generate you a brand new clip that with the timestamp that you're looking for so that you can uh, have the context that you're looking for in each individual clip. And once it comes back, here it is. So now we have our new clip that's eight seconds long instead of uh, the 10 seconds before. So we have the basket and it's gonna cut off right before the inbound pass. Um, so what can you do with each clip besides previewing it? You can download it locally. It comes through as an MP4 file. Um, you can get what we call, call our public URL. So this public URL is shareable. Um, um, with this URL, you are able to, uh, you're able to share this URL internally or externally with whomever you'd like to have access to it. So if you have, um, if you have uh, editing, if you have students 
doing your social in the games, but they need approval for posting and you're not around, you can have them send you this URL. You can open it up on your phone and you'd get this page here without having to log into the platform and approve the clip or deny the clip or, or, or make some edits. Also, it's great if you are submitting clips to your conference level for plays of the week, you can just send them this URL. They have the ability to hit these three dots on the bottom right and they can then download it. So you're not downloading it, uploading it to a shared file and then having them download it again or an FTP site for news organizations. So it's a great way to share clips without having to download them and then re-upload them and so on and so forth. You can just send this URL along and they have access to it. I would say don't send this URL to anybody that you don't want to have access to download your content. Um, that's one thing there. Um, we also have the ability to create a GIF. Um, and then the, th the last piece here is sharing directly out to social channels. So if you have the ability to share directly to Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram, um, face, uh, with Twitter here, you have the ability to load in as many Twitter handles as you'd like. So as you have sports, as your sports have their own Twitter handles, you don't have to log in and out of each one as their sports are being run through the platform. You have the ability to um, load them all in, link them all to the platform, so you can pick and choose which one you want to tweet to if you, um, as, you are, uh, as you're watching the game live or going back in through the post-production. Um, so you're able to pick your handle, type your messaging, and then you're able to pick a video or a GIF and simply click the upload button. And from here, we were kind of at the mercies of that Twitter server. And so it is, we're pushing it up to the server and we're waiting for the notification back that we are good to go. And here it is. And it allows you to then click into Twitter and then you'll see we have the embedded tweet in, the, in, the, uh, in your timeline and you're able to then uh, to preview it and see that it's there. Um, so perfect. Um, and then for Instagram, what we do is we email you a call, the URL to the email account on file. And what you're able to do from there is you're able to download it locally and then upload it either as an Instagram post or an Instagram story. So that's kind of the, the workaround that we have for that. Um, so that's everything we have here in live. Um, let me take you over to the post uh, production in the clip section here. This is where we will, uh, where you can work when your game ends, this is where all your content will live. So as your games end, everything in this table remains the same through the actions. You're able to also edit your clips if you need, need to. So if you wanted to edit this, this clip here, you can now edit it to say 38 seconds. It's gonna pick it up. And so the only difference is you have the single video player that everything is gonna live in here now. So your clip's gonna be picked up by the server, it's gonna be grayed out, and you're gonna wait for it, and it's gonna come through in a moment. Um, it takes about 20 seconds or so for a new clip to be generated. Um, so with everything being exactly the same in this table for your actions, um, what I'm gonna show you now is how to create some short form content. Um, so if you need, if you, we have three different options here. So we have your create a condensed game, which allows you to filter by your hype score and your event types. So if you like to find the most exciting plays like we were talking about before through the hype score, um, this game started with 92 plays. So if you left it as is, it would clip those 92, it would stitch those 92 clips together and create a video file for you. If you're looking for the most exciting ones, say we get to the sevens and above, we are now down to 32 plays. So if that's what you'd like, or if you have uh, want to filter by event type, so just the scoring plays, the two point plays, the three point plays, now you're down to 28. Um, you're able to hit the create condensed game and it's going to stitch all of these clips together and it's going to create a, um, an MP4 file for you that you're able to download. You're able to share it out to your social channels and you're also able to get that public URL. Um, the second option is to create a straight hype reel. What that means is that it's gonna take the highest ranking plays via the hype score. So all the nines, the eights, the, and so on and so forth, and create you a two minute highlight reel without uh, any human interaction. So all the, the only interaction you have is you're gonna hit this hype reel. It's gonna create that reel for you. It's gonna be two minutes long and you're gonna be good to go. 
And the third option is more hands-on. So here you're able to create a custom highlight package. Um, with that, you're able to upload any pre-roll or post-roll advertising or branding you'd like um, into the platform. So we have our branding, our advertisement here on the, uh, down here on the bottom as our selected clips. We go back to our available clips. You have the same filtering and hype uh, event type um, filtering you have that as you had on the other page available here also. So um, for example, say the, um, you set the record for three pointers in the game and you wanted to stitch them all together, you're able to do that here. So if we're just gonna say the five and above just to, for time's sake, you're able just to hit this plus button, you get the three pointers in the game. There's one of our reels. Um, you will we'll see here, you have some data. So you have your hype score, your event type, your timestamp and the score of the game when the event occurred. Uh, that way you're able to, you are able to, uh, to get that information. And if you added extra clips over here, so for example, if we added a, so we're gonna add this clip. Well, it's at the 21 minute mark. So we have to drag this back over here. You can reorganize your clips the way you'd like. So that keeps the story of the game intact. Um, you have a timestamp here. So this is a minute and 20, uh, 12 seconds long. So you have the ability to, uh, to, to uh, make sure that you're gonna hit a time that you're looking for. And then once you're ready, hit your create custom and you're gonna have, uh, it's gonna start processing. Um, you can access all your highlight packages here, but the easiest place in your output tab on the, on your, on the clip section, you have uh, the link here so you can open your link. I'll let this run through for a second to show you the transitions um, from clip to clip. So, and I apologize for the, if there's a lag or the video quality does not look very good. Uh, it's just the screen sharing uh, aspect uh, doesn't allow for the greatest quality of video, but when we are all of our videos, we can input anything, everything will be exported at 720. So if we can take in a 1080, um, it will be converted down to 720 for all the clips and all the exports of the MP4 files. Um, so that's, that's that. Um, so here we have our clips coming through. It goes clip by clip. Um, and this video, uh, this condensed game was four minutes and 38 seconds. Um, so with that, then you have the ability to download all the clips from your file, or you can share them out to your social channels. Um, so to bring us to the point of um, creating more content for now, what you're able to do also on the platform is you can add a file uh, without having to stream it. So if you have a, a file on your computer, an MP4 or a movie file, you're able to go to your uploads, choose a file, um, hit your, upload it. So you have your uploaded file here, select the date and time. It does, that's for your own personal preference. If you wanted the actual date and time of the game, or if you just wanted to put it today, you're gonna select your sport. So in this case, it's basketball, um, select your teams. And you're gonna hit create and it's gonna upload it to the platform. And, in, and what will happen is once it's uploaded, you'll get a screen that looks like this. So the game will be on the platform. It won't play, but what will happen is down below your detection progress will start, uh, our, will start climbing. So it starts at zero, it will go up to uh, one, two and so on and so forth to a hundred. Uh, it takes a two hour game, about one hour to process. And while it's processing, all of your clips are gonna start being generated on the right-hand side. So you can work with them while the game is still being processed. Uh, so once it's complete, you can output your, uh, you can output a, a condensed game or a highlight reel uh, pretty quickly. Um, your video library currently lives here. Um, so you have access to each one of your games. It's set up in a date folder uh, and then organized by, um, or it's or set up in a month folder and it's organized by date and time. So you have access to go back to any of your old content um, on the platform. Um, and one thing I wanted to have you guys look at was in our version two that will be um, hopefully coming out in the fall, you're gonna have a library of all your clips. So no matter what comes from a different game, um, all of your clips will be in one library, library, which then will allow you to put together plays of the week um, for all of your sports or season wrap-ups for an individual sport and creating the, that type of content for, 
for your social channels or for uh, newsletters or just postings on your website. Um, so that's a quick little look into what we're, what we're bringing uh, in the future where you're uh, or down the road so that you have access to multiple game clips on one in one section instead of only accessing each game at one point. Um, so with that, I am going to pass it back to Ian real quick and, and let him add anything that he would like to add before we start going through questions. No, that was, <clears throat> that was good. Uh, and, under, and under time. Thank you, um, Tim. No, that's great. Um, I, I'll say that, you know, um, we'll start to dig into the questions here. I see there's a few in the chat, a few in the QA, uh, so we'll go over those shortly. Um, you know, I think right here with this unique time we're living in, and I'll try to make the most of, of quarantine and and, uh, and learning about new technologies, you know, we see automation as, you know, really being the key to content creation and distribution going forward. Um, and we're just really glad we got to share this platform with you all today. I was telling Tim earlier that, you know, it took my, I think it took me about 10 years for, for my mom to, uh, for me to convince my mom to be able to, you know, finally buy an iPhone. And it took one week of quarantine for her to learn how to use Zoom. And I'm seeing a lot of just generally forced adoption of technologies or uh, attention to technologies that were previously not thought about. And um, hopefully uh, our technology is something that bring a lot of value to your workflow. So with that, I'm gonna dive into these questions here. Um, I'm gonna start in the chat window and then move over to Q and A. Uh, it looks like, oh, you know what? It looks like, uh, JD has answered most of, oh, all these already. Okay, well, we're going to go yeah. over to the QA section. Then. Thank you. Yeah, Ian, um, you'd already done yeah I've, I've yeah. already been answering a few. Um, one of the keys that came up that I'll, I'll discuss here um, briefly is uh, they were talking about uh, other providers. It, does this only work yeah. with Presto Stretch? And, and, and Tim mentioned in the demo, but any provider that you can get M3U8 link from will work. Um, one of the key things that, you know, I, I want to, stress to everybody is, is broadcast rights um, in, in that just because you are playing in the game doesn't necessarily mean you have rights to use the footage for highlights. So make sure if you're wanting to clip a, a road game or a, a neutral site tournament that you're going to, um, obviously you'll need to get the link from the school, but make sure you know you get written permission and, and explain to them what you're using it for um, just to cover your basis from a legal perspective down the line. Um, the other questions, um, as, as we've been picking up, I've, I've answered a bunch, but we've, we've got some, uh, we've got some advanced user questions and we've got some, uh, first time user questions. So, um, I think we'll start with this one, uh, Ian and Tim, uh, utilizing multi-camera for several sports, how is really affected by this? Ian, I'll take that. Um, so we are able to take in, uh, very, uh, very, uh, very different, many different sorts of production. So whether if you're a single camera in the center of the field or the court and just panning back and forth, that's perfect. Um, if you are doing a, um, a two or three camera production, that's great too. If you're doing a TV production, we can even do that. Um, one thing I thought I saw in the question so far is uh, actually from one of our customers, uh, TJ over at, uh, at uh, Palm Beach. Thank you for mentioning this. Um, in, uh, if you have replays a part of your broadcast, we also pick those up from the ins and the outs of the replay. So it's not uh, specific to the 10 second or whatever the offsets are. It's however long that replay is, we will get that context there of that for you and you'll have a bit that available also. All right, um, more, more questions um, coming in, uh, Ian and Tim. Um, there's there's one from Paul here. Um, we've been using a new camera which displays a shot of the scoreboard to show the score rather than an on-screen graphic. Will screen vision be able to view this or will that cause problems? Tim, I'll let you take that one as well. Um, that is something we would have to bring on board uh, in and try out. Um, it's different for every... It, the clarity is, would be one issue. So depending on the clarity of the shot of the scoreboard and kind of the digits and the way that the font and the way it looks, that's something we'd have to, to, to test out. And so that's something we would uh, test out at the beginning and, uh, and see, what it, see how it works with your content. 
All right, uh, John from Avila, is this something that can be integrated into the stretch backend, i.e. can will it replace the instant highlights functionality? Um, this is, you know, interesting, obviously, that, you know, Presto, we have within the stretch platform an instant highlights functionality. But, you know, long term, um, you know, I, I think it's safe to say that, th that this is the direction of, of where things are going in terms of automation and, and making things easier for you guys. So, you know, as our partnership continues with Really, um, that's certainly something that, that could uh, potentially happen in terms of a long term replacement for um, instant highlights as, as a feature, um, as a value added feature um, to our system. Um, but right now, um, you know, really is a, a standalone product. And, and while we're going to continue to work on some better integration points uh, at the moment, it is, uh, it is a, a separate add on product that is, is standalone at the moment uh, outside of our platform. But that's a, that's a good question, John. Um, Brad from the NAIA. Um, with the potential of the continuation of social distancing or fan restrictions in the fall, how can we use really to help generate sponsorship revenue? Uh, Ian, I don't think you can uh, deflect this one. I think this one's in your wheelhouse, my friend. Oh, yeah. So, you know, we're seeing a, a real spike uh, just in folks reaching out who are going to need to lean on um, live streaming uh, broadcasts in order to generate content. You know, there's a strong possibility that when things all, uh, you know, come back online in, in some form or fashion, that we're probably going to have to exercise some distancing. And in that case, I think that streaming uh, live events is going to be more important than ever before because um, I still want my sports. Um, and so I think, you know, right now going forward, we're going to see a world where streaming is going to be absolute uh, you know an absolute must have uh, in, in everyone's uh, it's a, you're gonna be in, in everyone's uh, ecosystem it's going to be a must and I think that you know our technology is going to be able to, to let um, you know folks who understand the power of streaming and the importance of it in this time uh, maximize their content in a, in a really efficient way so yeah thank you Brad it's a great question and and we have just seen a real spike in um, you know a lot of uh, whether it's, it's companies or organizations that are saying, you know what, we were dabbling in streaming, but now we need to, you know, jump in all the way. And, uh, we, and we're here to help um, mine the most content out, out of those streams. So thank you, Brad, for that question. A uh, question from uh, Alan from Simmons. Uh, we don't have broadcast announcers and certainly don't have a ton of fans for crowd noise. Will this be an issue with analyzation of the game for highlights? So thank you, Alan. No, it won't impact. Um, it won't impact your outputs. It might uh, limit some of the content a little bit because without those spikes, we won't have pieces of content that we might be getting otherwise. Uh, but it will still, you know, take care of your scoring plays. It will still do all of the the you know kind of traditional highlights that don't associate that aren't associated with sound spikes. And then I've left the fun questions for the end here. Uh, we've had a few questions about costs. Um, and, and really, there isn't a one size fits all cost structure that um, we, we can give you and break it down because, um, you know, we have, uh, and Ian can touch on this, it's, it's been more of a conference wide initiative so far. Um, than uh, individual schools signing up. So there are some options based on what you want to do, how many sports you want to do. Uh, but one of the things that we're excited about in our partnership, uh, and I'll, I'll have Ian discuss this, is a, a special discount we're giving in the first year of uh, multi-year agreements uh, for, uh, for Stretch Live customers using one of these really. Yeah, so right now what we're uh, doing is on a, a minimum two-year agreement we're offering 30% off of the first year. Um, and outside of that, there is a lot of customization in terms of customer need that we have to look over b before we can provide a price. Uh, so we just have to understand how many sports you're looking to do, how many total events are you looking to stream, um, just some moving thing, moving parts that we have to put together and then we'll you know, provide you with a pricing proposal. Um, we're working directly with uh, the Presto sales team on that. So, you know, we're happy to price anything out and we can turn it around 
uh, very shortly. All right, well, I think that uh, is all of the questions. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything um, that I, I answered that would be good for the group. I mean, we really touched on, um, uh, you know, individual providers. Um, while, you know, obviously we're, we're working on some deep integration to make it easier with Stretch Live, uh, we do uh, provide the links pretty easily. Um, and just from helping answer questions, some of the other providers in the collegiate space do it uh, easily. Um, questions I couldn't answer in a, in a, um, in a quick manner. A company like Livestream uh, doesn't look like they necessarily allow that M3U8. Um, so you'll have to talk to your streaming provider and, and see about uh, accessing that link um, that's utilized. But it's, it's a very common delivery mechanism uh, in the streaming world. So. Um, you know, most providers should be able to to provide that link. So obviously, um, you know, we've been working with really for a while and we have some good systems in place. They know our URL structure and can help you with that um, while we work on some more long term uh, integration points. Um, but, uh, you know, you'll have to uh, talk to your individual provider if you're not using Stretch Live uh, about uh, about accessing that link because it should be something that every provider gives to you. You just might have to ask for it. Hey, JD, quickly, uh, Brad had another question here and there's one final thing I'd like to touch on before we wrap here. Uh, but Brad said, can we put sponsor logos on our clips? Um, and right now in version two, I think Kim uh, teased a couple of screenshots of version two where you can see the platform being levered more as a sort of a content management system. Um, what we're working on internally is the ability to uh, do just that, Brad, which is add uh, your own sponsor logos onto your clips. Uh, in addition to that, we're also working on partnerships that will uh, allow our customers to, uh, to monetize their content. Um, those are things we really couldn't get into today because they're all in the works, but in version two, yes, you'll be able to put sponsor logos on your clips. Um, I think that that's a, a great place to potentially sell, um, uh, uh, you, you know, just sell space for, uh, for additional revenue. Um, I saw another uh, question here that ties into that uh, from Jordan, which is, can you add intro, outro clip for, for branding? That is another uh, item that we're looking to integrate along with the, uh, the, the, the logo placement as well. So yes, Jordan, that's something we're definitely looking to do. Um, as well as find a way to, uh, to, to help our partners monetize uh, this content in some way and Ian, create additional uh, you know, revenue stream uh, by advertising. Go ahead. Ian, on the intro outro clip, you are, right now currently you can add a, a, a video for either an intro or an outro with your own branding. Um, it just has to be a 720 file that you upload to the Great. platform and it will, uh, and currently if you want to go tweet that out, it would stitch that clip together for you and create a brand new video file for you. So it's, uh, it would, it's just one long clip. It's not a, it's not a short video. And then the second video starts. So it's just going to be instead of a 10 second clip, if you had a three second intro outro, it'd be, uh, 13 seconds. And you can also add, uh, either an intro or an outro to your custom highlight packages. Awesome. Thank you, Tim. Okay. I don't see anything else in QA. Thanks for the late flurry of, of questions there. I think it's all good. Uh, JD, I'll, I'll pass the mic uh, back to you. Thanks, Ian. Uh, if you guys have any questions uh, about Really, and, uh, and if you are a Presto customer, um, obviously um, you, can, you can reach out to, uh, to me, um, JD, at prestosports.com um, and you can also reach out to our sales team if you want to uh, discuss um, pricing for the upcoming year um, and then obviously uh, really uh, if you want to check them out on the web it's uh, r-e-e-l-y dot a-i uh, so they've got some good information up on the web and you can see their uh, who they're currently working with in the college sports space Ian does a good job keeping those uh, those logos updated on the front page um, so you get a sense of, of who's using it. You can go back in their Twitter timelines and get a sense of, of how it works and kind of that uh, infrastructure and, and what kind of engagement it, it drives. So um, I, I really want to thank Ian and Tim for their uh, time today. 
And uh, you know, we're, we're really excited to continue uh, working with them and, and seeing where they're going with version two of this product because uh, the social media engagement that we've seen it provide is definitely a game changer and the automation uh, saves staffing time and, and makes things easier. So really appreciate everybody's time today on the webinar and uh, we'll, we'll leave it here. Um, and we'll uh, be back next week with another uh, fan engagement webinar here at Presto Sports. Again, uh, J.D. Fox, Director of Partnerships. Uh, thanks for joining us today, and we'll talk to you soon.